Hello, everyone. Ari Bluestein here, the CEO and executive producer of the Sports Fan Base Network, and welcome to what will be our final edition of SFBN Classics. And we are going to go out with a bang. In addition to the high school sports that we cover, we cover a good amount of college sports. And this game from March of 2016 was Westchester University basketball against IUP in the PSAC men's basketball semifinals. And we had the honor and privilege of covering the PSAC semifinals and championship because Westchester was the host and we do a lot of Westchester games. And this one was an instant classic. Back and forth all game. And of course, the big finish and the buzzer beater by Matt Penical. I had the pleasure of calling this game with Jack Cap. Enjoy the game. Welcome back to Hollinger Fieldhouse here in Westchester. Game two of our PSAC men's basketball semifinal doubleheader between the IUP Crimson Hawks and the host team, the Westchester Golden Rams. Alongside Jack Cap, I'm Ari Bluestein, and obviously this is the game that most of these fans are looking for, but Westchester will have a tough test against IUP and their leading scorer, Brandon Norfleet. Brandon Norfleet is Mr. Everything, leading scorer in the PSAC shooting 47%, 41% from the three-point line and 77% from the free throw line. He's also got about 4.5 assists per game. Yeah, he's a pretty good player, but Westchester has some good players themselves, and what a thrilling win that they had over East Stroudsburg to get to this point, led by their freshman point guard, Matt Penical. Matt, Pen Matt Penical had a great game, probably his best game of the season, and just at the right time for the Golden Rams. Should be a good one here at Hollinger, and we've got the home crowd here to support the Golden Rams. IUP versus Westchester, coming up next here on the Sports Fan Base Network. Back to Hollinger Fieldhouse. Alongside Jack Cap, I'm Ari Bluestein. Thank you for joining us for the second game of our PSAC men's basketball doubleheader as the IUP Crimson Hawks take on the Westchester Golden Rams. And the starters are just about to be announced, but Jack Cap, I know it's spring break, so it's not quite the student frenzy that we had on Tuesday night for the East Stroudsburg game, but still a pretty nice crowd on hand, and IUP traveled well as well. Yeah, IUP had quite a trip here, I'm sure. It's uh, several hours across the state, but the place is filling up. I see a few empty seats. I'm sure we're going to have a full house night. An exciting second game coming up on SFBN. Starters being announced for the visiting IUP Crimson Hawks there in their road black. Their starting lineups are as followed. Number one, Anthony Glover. Number three, Brandon Spain. Number 10, Tevin Hanner. Number 23, the star player, Brandon Norfleet. And number 44, Daddy Ubede. Head coach for IUP in his 10th season is Joe Lombardi. IUP comes into this game with a record of 21 and 7 and 17 and 5 in PSAC play. At least that was through the regular season. For the Westchester Golden Rams, who are 22 and 5 overall as 17 and 5 in PSAC play. Their starting lineup are as follows. Number 12, the point guard is Matt Penical. Shooting guard, number three, Malik Jackson. At the other guard, number 11, Avery Brown. Up front, number 21, Josh Trumpy. And followed by number 22, Matt Wisely, head coach for the Westchester Golden Rams, is Damian Blair in his eighth season. And Damian Blair suffering a rather serious injury in practice. Will be using a kind of a uh, wheelchair adopted adapted wheelchair for the game. Had a, a, an Achilles tear, by the way. Uh, for those fans who don't know, and uh, I, I assume he had surgery. 
I would assume. I think you have to have uh, yeah. surgery on that right away, don't it's, you? It's uh, one of the more serious injuries you can get as an athlete. IUP, they're in the visiting black uniforms with their crimson lettering and numbering. Westchester in their home white with the gold lettering, numbering, and trim. And Westchester wins the opening tip, and Avery Brown goes right in and starts it off in the first five Avery seconds. Brown. What a change of direction and jump stop. Beautiful layup by Brown. Way to start it. And the entry pass down low to Ubede is knocked away by Trumpy. And, you know, I talked to uh, Westchester assistant coach Ben Kay. He said, we're going to start Trumpy today possibly for his defensive presence. Very interesting move. Trumpy get, and he played well in the last game that we were here. So he's earned the opportunity. Well, here's Trumpy going to show off his offense a little bit. No good offensive rebound by who else but Matt Wisely. Jackson for three off the mark. Trumpy, no good. Trumpy is from Trinity. Trumpy from Trinity High, Central PA. Two nothing, Westchester here in the opening minute. Here's Norfleet, the superstar pulls up for three. No good. Rebound Wisely. Here comes Jackson on the run. Leaves it for Penical. Oh, that's great hesitation. Mm. Avery Brown has a shot blocked, but he's able to get it back. And Westchester will reset. Several big time fakes by Matt Penical. The shot was blocked in the corner very nicely, by the way. Penical to Brown. Now he's got a good look. No good. Mm. Trumpy deflects the rebound out, stay. and it's going to go out of bounds off of the hands of Brandon Spain. A big swing in the arm by Trumpy to bat that ball into the top of the front court remains Golden Rams ball. Side out for Wisely. Penical. Brown again for three. Off That's the off. mark. Jackson blocked from behind by Spain. How about Spain going up for the block? Spain with a big block for the visiting IUP Crimson Hawks. Glover now with the basketball for IUP. The dribble handoff with Spain. Now over to Norfleet. Around a high ball screen from Ubede. Cross court skip pass, a jumper for Hanner. It's an air ball, and Trumpy gets the rebound. Westchester has played phenomenal defense here so far. Penical down low wisely. Quick move. Underneath the basket, blocked by Tevin Henner. Three block shots early in the game. How about IUP showing the defense as well as here's a quick three from Glover, and IUP is on the board, and they've got the lead. IUP, IUP showing early strong defense in the semifinal PSAC game. Well, Westchester as well. It's a very yes. defensive-minded battle here so far. Jackson, the kick out. Wisely is left wide open. He's going to take it, and he makes it. I guess IUP is okay with Wisely taking the three, but that time he makes a pay. Wisely lined it up very nicely and put it right home. Westchester back with a two-point edge. IUP basketball, they've got 16 to shoot. Anthony Glover with it down low. Ubede falls to the ground, but they're gonna get a hold down low on Josh Trumpy. That'll be the first foul called of this game. Three referees today, Mark Tortorella, John Layton, Ralph Bretz. Bretz from Maryland coming up for this PSAC semifinal. Inbound to Norfleet, Traveling. and he traveled. Yep, saw that one coming from a mile away. And just after I mentioned Brett's name, he calls the traveling First against IUP. A couple of substitutions, by the way, for the Crimson Hawks. Coach's son, number 12, Dante Lombardi, the six-foot freshman, into the game, went to the Kiski School. And also into the game is Kobo Diaz, 6'8 freshman, as Jackson airballs the three, but wisely able to get Another chance for Westchester. Oh, and Norfleet steals it right from Brown. Two on one and fouled hard mm. for IUP is number four, Dante Lombardi. And camera woman Frankie Stokes protecting herself very well. Frankie Stokes on triple duty now, and we'll hear from her later operating the camera and, of course, also protecting the camera. Yeah, she did a good job on that one. We've lost several tripods this year, I think. Dante Lombardi. He's got the first. As we mentioned, he's the coach's son, six foot 
180 pound freshman, a native of Indiana, PA, obviously, because his mm -hmm. father works there. Went to the Kiskey School. It, that's a real fine prep school, if I yes, remember correctly. Yep. Mm -hmm. First substitution for Westchester, as it's going to be Mike Wilson off the bench. A nice rebound there by Diaz, who put, excuse me, Norfleet now has it and puts yeah. it up and in. Yeah, but the save was beautiful, and the rebound, the offensive rebound on the foul shot rarely occurs. Mike Wilson to Penical. Crossover, steps up, a jumper. He was a little bit off balance, and it rolled out. I like when Penical does that. Yeah, but that time he was a little bit off balance. Yep. Lombardi across and gets it over to Glover, and IUP will reset. They've got a one-point lead. Close game here so to start things off, and a slow start for both teams. Number 22, C.J. Rudisil also into the game for Mike. IUP as Norfleet, with the hesitation, has the ball knocked away on the dribble drive. Mike Wilson in the game there. Look there. out, he's going to launch it. And he was foul. Oh, we have a foul underneath, I believe. It's going to be a foul underneath on the three. Mm. And I believe it will be Westchester ball when we return. Yes, the foul was on C.J. Rudisil. So a close game here to start things off. We'll be back. You're watching PSAC men's basketball semifinal action here on the Sports Fan Base Network presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Alongside Jack Kapp, I'm Ari Bluestein. Six to five here early on. IUP with the lead. And, you know, Jack Kapp, I know Westchester beat IUP by 10 earlier in the year, but you know, that game was all the way back on November 22nd. So yeah. you can basically throw that one out the window. Those early games usually don't mean all that much. How about the big man, Thomas, Thomas White. White, into the game, and three seconds later, muscles it up, doing what he does best to give Westchester the lead again by one. That's always a big help for the Golden Rams when Thomas White can get a few baskets inside like that. He's a presence. Westchester coming out here in a zone. Lombardi is going to launch a three. Nothing but net for Dante Lombardi. And he's not in the game just because he's the coach's son, as he just showed us. A yeah, it looks freshman. like he can play a little bit there, Cap. Strong kid, freshman. Penicato wisely, IUP up by two. Back and forth game so far. Penical down low to White, working inside under the basket. No good, got it back, put it up and in. Thomas White working against the freshman Kobo Diaz, and I would think Thomas White has the advantage on that yes, matchup. Yes, he does, and it was nice resilience on the offensive rebound to get that basket. Good work by Thomas White. Tied at nine, Crimson Hawk basketball. Norfleet, high ball screen from Diaz. Pulls up for the J from the right elbow, and Brandon Norfleet. With his second bucket, he's got four. And speaking of presences, that, that is the man you have to watch. Leading scorer in the PSAC this year. Wisely's going to take it again. Off the mark this time, fight for the rebound, and Diaz comes up with it and saves it to Norfleet. The dribble drive by Norfleet around Wisely. Great footwork in a hesitation dribble by Norfleet. He is very talented. Scores 22.5 per game. He's got six so far to lead all scorers, and Westchester could use a bucket right here after four straight by IUP. Penical all the way out on the Ram Horn as part of the logo near midcourt. Under 10 to shoot now. A lot of standing around from Westchester and results in a turnover. Norfleet. And we're going to have a foul on Wilson. That's actually a very smart foul, I think, by Wilson. Because Norfleet was probably going to score that. A couple of foul. substitutions. As, yes, the third team foul on Westchester. Avery Brown back in. Tyrell Long into the game for the first time. Also into the game for the first time. Uh, excuse me, returning to the game, I should say, is Brandon Spain, as well as Daddy Ubede. And here's another three from Lombardi. Oh, yeah. And he's two for two from beyond the arc. Seven straight for the Crimson Hawks. Tyrell Long down low, knocked away and stolen. And IUP's defense is suffocating the Golden Rams right now. You bet a down the lane. Damian Blair's got to call a timeout. And the IUP Crimson Hawk faithful making some noise. Nine straight for IUP gives them a nine point lead with 13-16 to play. 
IUP with a surge here. And Daddy Ubede, one of the best names we've ever had on these broadcasts, just glided in on that basket to make it a nine point lead. Uh, Damian Blair cannot be happy. And I know Westchester, they're off to a bad shooting start. They're four of 16 for 25%, one for eight from beyond the arc. And I look at that at Cap, I know they like to shoot threes, but uh, they are, are settling for three pointers right now. And when they're trying to get it inside, other than a couple of buckets by Thomas yeah. White, they're really not being successful. No, and they've lost the ball several times now. Three turnovers for each team, although I thought it was four or five for Westchester, but we're seeing three in the official stats here. IUP, by the way, shooting seven of nine for 78% here in the early going. Mm. Well, they're taking high percentage shots, and Lombardi's knocking them down from the outside, too. That, that helps a little bit. Kind of what we just saw in the last game, in the last semifinal here. Wisely in the post against Ubede, around him, mm. puts it up, doesn't matter, it's a traveling violation. You know what, that is the right call. I saw traveling also, thought he was gonna get away with it, but he did not. Malik Jackson checks back in. Mike Wilson and Lombardi just got a little talking to. I don't know what was going on there. And for Westchester, number three, Jackson. And Wilson will step out of the game. IUP showing a lot of intensity here in the early going. Norfleet drives in on Brown, reverse layup. Oh man, Norfleet putting on a show. Four of five Brandon for Norfleet. eight for Brandon Norfleet. It's 20 to nine. Now he's got an out. offensive foul on Wisely underneath the basket. He was moving. You Betty around and took him out of his position. Off the ball, team control foul against Wisely. Not a good start here for Westchester. It's all IUP. It was tied at nine and 11 straight for the Crimson Hawks. Down low, Ubede working against Wisely, double team, lost the basketball, Malik Jackson picks it up. And maybe that's what Westchester needs to get themselves going a little bit. Penical leaves it for Jackson. Now Penical calling out the play. Driving in, kicks it out. Jackson that's goes in, oh. that's gonna be a block. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I think they no. got Lombardi with, he was moving. No, but I saw a forearm Yeah, I saw out. the forearm a little yeah. bit too. Yeah, I agree. I that one could have gone either way. Yeah. It really could have gone either way. <laughs> yeah. I would have gone the other way, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> and for those of you who uh, don't know, Jack Cap, yeah. a retired PIAA official, so and you will hear him comment quite a bit on yeah. the official calls. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to criticize. I mean, I'm, John Layton's a much better official than I ever was, but I just saw it the other way, yeah. Westchester will keep it with just over 12 minutes to play here in the first half. They badly need a bucket. Tyrell Long, Trumpy back in the game. Drives in oh, against man. Ubede, forced it, no good. Rebound being fought for, out of bounds, and will stay with the Golden Rams. Boy, let me tell you, Ubede is physical at 6'6", 225. He's a we senior. A full media timeout. We'll take a timeout here as IUP leads Westchester by 11. The Golden Rams looking for answers on both ends of the floor. We'll be back here on SFBN presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Alongside Jack Cap, I'm Ari Bluestein. Thank you for joining us as we continue on with our coverage of the PSAC Final Four. Westchester trailing, and that's not going to help as Trumpy lost it. It was a steal by Lombardi. IUP the other way, and they return the favor as Spain was looking down low for Ubede. And it's a fifth turnover for IUP. Thomas White back in, Trumpy out. Also back in, CJ Rudisil, the 6'6", 200-pound redshirt sophomore from Pittsburgh. Penical, top of the key, drives in, pump fake, nothing there. Mm. Westchester's offense is just in disarray it's right now. It's just dead right now. We've seen them go through stretches like this before throughout the season. Penical has to force it and he somehow gets it to drop. They needed that really badly. First bucket 
since the 14.51 mark, so three and a half minutes without a bucket for Westchester until that moment. And it could use a stop right here as well. Avery Brown in charge of Norfleet. Mm. Drives in, and he was fouled. Norfleet has all the tools offensively. He is a great offensive player. Drew the foul there. We'll get two at the line. Norfleet has been to the free throw line coming into today 152 times, mm. shooting at a 79% clip. So he's a guy, he's a 41% shooter from beyond the arc, right. a 46% shooter from the field, and a 79% shooter from the free throw line. He's also dished out four and a half assists per game and is second on the team in steals. When you talk about an all-around player, all around. that's that right there. And four rebounds a game too. Not too shabby. Not too, no, really. He's six a, five guard. He's a, a guy who could end up in pro ball somewhere. Yeah, I, oh yeah, easily overseas. Easily, yes. easily overseas, if not better. 22 to 11. IUP doubling up the Golden Rams. Jackson splits the D. Fourth shot doesn't go. Here comes Brandon Spain the other way. Driving in, pulls up for the J short. Offensive rebound. It's good and one. What a strong play for IUP and number 10, Tevin Hanner. Tevin Hanner, hanging the, tough. The IUP bench is going nuts right now. They've opened up a big 13 point lead. And again, like I said just a few minutes ago, Westchester's win over IUP on no in November doesn't mean anything. Right These now, are two different teams right here. It's playoff basketball. And right now, Westchester, they are in big, big trouble. IUP 75% shooting, Westchester 26% shooting. Thomas White at the elbow. Oh God. Oh. oh, they got a foul. That was, I think IUP wanted to travel. I wouldn't have blamed them if they called it. Thomas White started to spin to his left and did not continue the move and somehow ended up going right. He's lucky he didn't get, he didn't get called for traveling. He's Second personal foul, by the way, on CJ Rudisill third team foul so Thomas White at the line for two Thomas White currently a 49 percent free throw shooter but he makes the first that's a good I think good shot by him you look at IUP they are their guards are very good they're big guys you have you and Diaz is not bad but he's young I think you really have to use Thomas White today I agree I always like using Thomas White now that was a bad miss on that second free throw about his average though about one for two Hey, he's right at 49%. That's, yeah, there you go. The pep band trying to get Westchester into it a little bit. Here's a dribble drive on the baseline and a kick out. Norfleet with the pump fake and the step in. Off the mark, wisely with a rebound. Very important to win the battle on the glass here today as Jackson takes a quick three, air balls it. Jackson, 0 for 5 for no points on the floor here so it far. Has not been his half so far. Traveling. Travel on Brandon Spain. Turnover number six. Both teams have six turnovers. Right, but the difference is IUP is shooting 69% now yeah. from the floor. Westchester, five for 20 and one for nine from three. That's not good, yep. 69.2% for IUP from the field. And Seven. IUP's also been to the free throw line a few times. Yeah, 80% from the free throw line. Oh, dangerous pass from Penical. And Penical, I know he's a freshman, but he's made some very dangerous passes Which here so far. Which is not like him. He's usually very smart, well, leading the team in minutes played and a very smart point guard. Well, the IUP defense has really pressured him as as they have done to the rest of the Westchester players right now. Penical to Wisely. 12 to shoot. Avery Brown drives in. Blocking foul called, and Avery Brown will go to the line for two. That was another one of those 50-50 calls. What'd you think? I, I thought that was going to go the Ooh, other way. So did I. <laughs> That's the second one I thought was going the other way. Well, mm. let's see if Avery Brown can take advantage. He has struggled as well. Yeah. One of four from the floor, 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. Only two points. He needs to get these two. And he misses. Uh, Westchester's going to have some opportunities here at the free throw line if they are going to 
get back into this game, you have to capitalize on those. One of two for Brown. And it's Crimson Hawk basketball. Westchester staying in that zone with the three guards up top and the two big men down low. A 3-2 presented by Westchester. Norfleet for three. Oh, he is so good. Mm. Brandon Norfleet, three for IUP. That's his first three of the game. He's got 13 points already, matching the entire Westchester team. And Ubede poked that away. Luckily, Brown was able to pick it back up. And another blocking foul called, and IUP's bench is irate because that is the third 50-50 call that went against them. Coach Lombardi out on the floor on that one. Three in a row where it could have gone either way and Westchester gets the benefit of these calls. Second personal foul, by the way, on Daddy Ubede. Second big man for IUP to pick up two personals. Rudisil is the first. Brown back to the line and makes the first. And you know, Westchester, they're driving in because they're not making their three. So yeah. you have to hope that eventually somebody finds their touch from the outside. And as big and as strong as Daddy is, he took a hard shot on that and went to the ground. Second free throw, no good. Tyrell Long fighting for the rebound, but fell to the ground and couldn't get it. Lombardi was able to come up with it. Big fight by him. Was not successful on the rebound though. Two touchdown lead is IUP doubling up Westchester. Don't count the shot. I believe we're going to have a foul off the basketball, and that yeah. one's going to be on Kobo Diaz. Yep. That'll be his first. So the big man accumulating some fouls early on here for IUP. And again, getting back to my point earlier, given the threes are not falling, I think you got to go to more Thomas White. Yeah, two on Ubede, two on Rudisil, yeah. and one on Diaz. We'll see if that's a factor later in the game. Tyrell Long driving in. A little bit of contact. Steal by Diaz. Saves it from going out of bounds. Real nice save by Diaz. Lombardi with another three. That's an air ball. A little bit too deep. He wasn't really in rhythm. Not a great choice there by Lombardi, who had been perfect from the floor before that shot. Yeah, he kind of pushed that one off his shoulder. Really not a good shot to take there. Got to try and get Malik Jackson going. Great look down low, but great D by IUP. And wisely is fouled on the pump fake. So smart. That was a great look, but that IUP defense is just sniffing everything out right now. They really are, but that was some great work by wisely, as we always see him do. All the moves, all the fakes, and he gets to the line for two. They're still down 14, and have only scored 14 in this half. Well, you look at the game earlier that we had with Shippensburg yeah. leading... Uh, Mercyhurst by 14 as well yeah. with Shippensburg shooting out of this world and Mercyhurst shooting the ball terribly. Similar position here Early for Westchester. Mm -hmm. Same idea. Chip away, don't panic, run your offense, get some stops on defense. Absolutely good advice. I hope Damian Blair is thinking the same thing. Well, he's a better basketball mind than I am, well, so I'm sure that he is on the same That's why table. he's in the position he's in and that's why we're doing the broadcast, <laughs> but Nevertheless, I think you're right there. Mike Wilson back into the game. Jackson Highland checking in for the first time. Brandon Spain with it, who's also back in the game. High post Lombardi. Lombardi dips in, gets it over Wisely. No good. Wisely with another rebound. His sixth already. And Penical for Highland. Wisely fakes the handoff. Highland's going to take a three from the corner off the mark. Avery Brown skying in for the rebound. Goes in oh, off the glass. Move. Got it to go. Wow. Avery Brown now with six to lead the way for Westchester. And the Golden Rams to within ten. And the pep band and the Golden Ram faithful getting into it. That was really remarkable footwork by Avery Brown. I agree. Wow. Hanner on the outside, Diaz. Hanner inside, spin move against Wisely. Got it to go, nice move by the 6'5 senior forward, Tevin Hanner. Brown turns around though, oh, yeah, that was not a good shot. He never got his balance, never got it squared up. Lombardi in transition, the kick out for Glover. Nowhere to go, and IUP will reset, leading by 12. 
Glover for three from the wing. No good. Rebound by Wilson. There's oh, an injury. And, yeah, that's Spade who's down on the floor. Wilson goes in, makes the layup. He hit his head. Something's yeah, wrong. Yeah, Brandon Spain down on the floor it's, it, in pain. It looks serious. Yeah, it's a, we're going to take an injury timeout here on SFBN while the trainers take a look at Spain. And uh, you're right, I think it was his head. So we will step away. Westchester down by 10 to IUP. We'll be back here on SFBN. Alongside Jack Cap, I'm Ari Bluestein. Westchester down by 10, but they have trailed by as many as 14 in this game to the IUP Crimson Hawks. And they've played almost a flawless game of basketball here so far. Yes, they have. And uh, the percent, shooting percentage for Westchester has just not been good. Yeah, one for 11 for 9% from beyond mm, the arc. That hurts. 29% overall. It's going to be a three for Norfleet. No good. We're going to have a foul underneath, I believe, on Westchester. Yeah. Looks like Wisely. Did I get that right? I think Wilson. Okay. I think they put up the number one. And that is the seventh team foul for Westchester. So it'll be a one and one for Cobo Diaz. Cobo Diaz. Diaz, a 78% free throw shooter on the year coming into the game averaging 8.4 points and 6.5 rebounds for contest and he makes the front end he will have another he's a 6'8 194 pound freshman Jackson. from Spain yeah he actually is uh, he's from the Canary Islands which is owned by Spain I guess uh, protectorate of Espana Diaz two for two back to a 12 point lead for IUP Love to see Westchester get this thing down to six or eight, perhaps, heading into the half. Jackson with a drive. Mm. Uh, mm. No good. Mm. Rebound out of bounds. It will stay with Westchester. And Ooh. Jackson now 0 for his first six from the floor. I actually thought he was going to get the foul there. He did not receive the call. Jackson averaging almost 16 a game. Has not scored yet. Wisely, mm. kind of an ugly opposite hand shot right Surprising there. Surprising shot by Wisely. And IUP's defense has just taken Westchester's offense completely out of the flow. Lombardi down low on the baseline and the finish for Tevin Hanner. And again, as you see Damian Blair looking on with that, on crutches with that torn Achilles. Not much he can do here. As Westchester continuing to struggle and IUP having their way. 13 to shoot for Westchester. Penacal kicks it into the corner. Jackson drives baseline, and he makes the bucket as he's falling over, and there's the first Jackson. points of the game from Malik Jackson. What and now we have a whistle. I think we have some blood on the hand for Jackson Highland. What a move by Malik Jackson. Taking the baseline and then spinning back to the basket with a bank shot. Lombardi will inbound as Westchester putting on a little full court man here. Anthony Glover says, I got it. And he'll take it up the floor. Westchester gets back into their 3 2. That's a foul. You Avery Brown. Yeah, you can't do that. He pushed Kobo Diaz out of the way. That's I can understand the frustration of the pick I mean, being there, but you can't do that. You can't just shove a, a, a screener seven, away. Eight, He's trying to show the ref what he was doing. Oh. He's allowed to do that. You can't shove him away, Avery. Cobo Diaz at the line again for a one and one. He made two of two a moment ago. He's got that one. Crimson Hawks up 13. It was tied at nine, and then IUP went on an 11 nothing run, and that is basically about where we're at here. Golden Rams need to get this under 10. Oh! And the iron unkind to Diaz on the second. Yeah, I agree. I think in the next five minutes, you've got to yeah. get it to about six or eight heading into the half. That would be great if they could do that. Penacal lost it behind his back, got it back somehow, and it's foul. a foul on IUP. Yeah. That's going to go against Anthony Glover, I believe. That's foul number one on Glover, the team's eighth. So that's going to send Penacal to the free throw line for a one and one. Penacal 
an 85% free throw shooter coming into the, the game, the leader on the Westchester Golden Rams. Penical lucky to get away with that. He almost lost the ball. He's got the first. Yeah, Penical has kind of been out of sorts a little bit. Yes, he has. And when your point guard is out of sorts, I guess that trickles down to the he, rest of the team. The last time we saw him against East Stroudsburg, he basically played the best college game of his life. So let's see if he can get together for the second half here. Second one is good. Down 12, uh, excuse me, down 11. And as bad as they played, they're only down 11, which isn't that much No, of an it's not, but you, you want to get within single digits. Sure, but they just have not played well. Lombardi with wow. the three from way outside. I don't think his father slash the coach nope. is going to be too happy about that, but Norfleet gets it back on a careless pass, and that's the kind of thing yep. you can't do if you're Westchester. Especially with Norfleet hanging Anthony around. Westchester back down 13. Great look from Jackson to Wisely. Wisely well, they got those two quick Westchester. points back. Yeah, it would have been nice to get those two points yeah. back without giving up the easy bucket for IUP. All right, Lombardi with the second bad shot choice for him in a row. 15 to shoot. Glover thought about a deep three. Now Lombardi splits the D. Kick out, it's a Diaz corner. Three rattles out and goes back down. Thought that was gonna pop out. Diaz. Nice shot by Diaz from the corner. 14 point lead for IUP. And every time Westchester, you think they're gonna get something going on offense, IUP has the answer. Tyrell Long drives in, splits the D and he traveled. Yeah, this man-to-man uh, this -man defense for IUP has been stifling. 326 remaining in the half, and it's been all IUP over the last 12 minutes. We'll be back. You are watching PSAC Men's Basketball Semifinal Action here on SFBN, presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Alongside Jack Cap, I'm Ari Bluestein. Thank you for joining us here on SFBN. Westchester trailing IUP by 14, and Cap, the Crimson Hawks, they are shooting the ball very well. Other than a couple of ill-advised threes by Lombardi, yeah, uh, their their shot selection is good. Good, they're playing D. They're forcing turnovers. Again, it's really been a almost perfect first half of basketball for the Crimson Hawks. Sixty-one percent from the field. You are correct. Fifty percent from the three-point line and seventy-eight percent from the free throw line. Norfleet was trapped but found Kobo Diaz. Norfleet now gets a high ball screen, goes through the Westchester D and puts it in. He is really a uh, pretty good player and a pretty well, guy to watch. Well, during one of our breaks, I said to you the words, silky smooth. Silky. That's what he yeah. reminds me of. I mean, he... Jamal Wilkes from many years ago. Jackson with the drive, had it blocked, got it back. It He's trapped on the Get end line. Tried to save it off of the IUP players legs but it ends up going back to the Crimson Hawks now Glover drives in puts it up and in this is a very very good Western PSAC team we have not seen them all year they're impressive well there's a reason they're the top team out of the West and we're gonna have a reach in foul on Brandon Spain on Penical I don't remember Westchester giving up 40 plus points and a half this year maybe that First East Stroudsburg game. There was one game we did early in the season right. where they had a re really, really bad game, but um, they have not looked like this too much. Brandon Spain evidently is okay from that injury. He's back in the game. Right, he's back in the game. That's good to see. It looked really bad when he went down. But and uh, Jackson Highland looks like he's back on the bench as yeah. well. He came out with an injury. Hmm. Penacal made the first. He'll have another as the shooting woes continue for Westchester from the floor. Well put. Their only three-pointer made was Matt Wisely, the first one that the team took, which was a surprise to mostly everybody. Yeah. Because Wisely does not make a lot of threes. 9% from the three-point line for the home team Westchester. Hanner on the outside, Diaz, 15 to shoot now in the hands of Norfleet. 
Drives in against Wisely, blocked by Tyrell Long from the opposite side. Tyrell Long blocked that shot twice. Once with his left hand and then once with his right hand. Yeah, unfortunately, he went off his right hand and then out of bounds. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 10 seconds to shoot for the Crimson Hawks. 2.06 to play here in the opening half. Spain inbounds it to Norfleet in the corner. Drives baseline. Kicks it to Spain, who lost it off yeah. his foot. Boy, I'll tell you, North Philly, he sees the whole court. He has just great court awareness and, and excellent spacing ability. Golden Rams basketball, they could use a field goal. They haven't had one of those in a while. A Matt Wisely layup three minutes ago as Tyrell there we go. dials it long distance. It's about time. Well, that's a big bucket. And if Tyrell Long's going to be the guy that can shoot it today, maybe mm. he's the one you look for. And a good time for that three-pointer from Long. They needed that badly. Still down 13. Norfleet being harassed by Wilson, Wilson. knocked away for a moment. Norfleet, and we're going to have a reach-in foul on Westchester's Tyrell Long. Very tough call. And Mike Wilson was very close to a foul there just previous to that. Yeah, I thought they were going to get Wilson for the and, reach initially. And Wilson's got two. That would have been his third. Norfleet, and, and one and one. I just saw the coach hold up two fingers to Mike Wilson saying, be careful, you've got two fouls, he wanted to remind them. Well, that was the second on Tyro Long mm -hmm. as well. So Brandon Norfleet at the line. He's and off. he misses the front end, and Trumpy is able to get the rebound. And that's big. Let's see if Westchester can cash in. Lob down low to Wisely. And he was fouled, no shot, but it's going to be two shots anyway. Yep. Uh, as Westchester and uh, IUP, for that matter, now in a double bonus. And Coach Damian Blair of Westchester is switching from crutches to the semi-wheelchair to sitting on the scoring table. Right now he's on crutches. Yeah, he just can't get comfortable well, over uh, there. Yeah, he's we got a, he had a couple of shots of him earlier. He's got to be in pain. Now he's got one knee down. Two shots for Wisely, missed the first. He's punching his crutch. It's, it's a tough one. I, I give him a lot of credit. He's a very brave man. Wisely second. Oh, he missed both. both. Wilson got the rebound. And then he traveled. Mm, mm, 11th mm. turnover for Westchester. There's Damian Blair. Yeah, he can't get comfortable. And I'm sure That's the fact that his team is losing by 13. Mm. He can't be happy either. A great athlete in his own right a few years back, but, <laughs> and he did get hurt in practice, right? Yes. Oh, and Stole Trumpy it. comes up with the steal. Two on one if they hurry. Long and one. Yeah. Tyrell Long. Tyrell Long and a great decision by Trumpy to give that ball up. And a great job by Long taking that in stride, not putting it on the floor, and he draws the contact. Second foul, by the way, on Brandon Norfleet. He's the third IUP Crimson Hawk to pick up their second personal foul. And now Tyrell Long at the line to try and complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Can't do it. Last three free throws missed, and then you have a silly reach-in foul on Long. No reason for that. It's third foul. Mike Wilson almost got that offensive rebound again. And Tyrell Long, who just picked up his, his, uh, another foul, his third personal, he's the only one that has shown that he's shooting the ball well today. He's going to have to come and out. And he's going to have to come out. I don't know when he's coming back in. He'll come out on the second shot here. Two shots for Dante Lombardi, who is one of two from the line today, and he misses the first. There goes Long. He's out. Also, Wilson is out. Malik Jackson and Jackson Highland back in. The two Jacksons back in the game. Lombardi getting a second shot here. Second one is good. Nothing but net. 12-point advantage for IUP. You know, if Westchester can get a bucket or a three, cut this to about 10, they'll be in decent shape as Highland launches a three air balls. And Trumpy is able to get the rebound. He's got it. And one! There we go as Josh Trumpy put up the pump fake, drew the contact, and he'll go to the line for one. And right now, the interior scoring of Westchester, not one of the strengths of this team, 
is helping keep them in the game right now. Coach Joe Lombardi out on the floor, did not like that call. He's in the ear of one of the officials, but that's not the official that made the call. Second personal foul on Kobo Diaz, the fourth, fourth. IUP player with two personal fouls. Norfleet, Ubede, Rudisil, and Diaz, and all Trump with two for the Crimson Hawks. If Trumpy hits this and he does, they've got it under 10. Mm. That's where you want to be. You could use a stop right here. Buzzer again. The third inadvertent buzzer of today. Two in the first game, one in this game. Maybe it wasn't inadvertent. I don't know what happened. Hmm. Well, it will remain IUP basketball. 30 second shot clock is at 30 seconds. Right, so we've got a 16 and a half second difference between the game clock and shot clock to be exact, although Something they may add a second or so on the clock. Possibly. Because I think the game clock ran, but the shot clock did not. Or possibly ran and then was recycled. There is an official at the table that's the alternate official, Jim Koskinen, and he's having some input on this. Coming up, we'll have the Pennsylvania Army National Guard halftime report. And we'll give you the first half stats and scoring, and we'll recap the first half. And the third member of our broadcast team, Frankie Stokes, will talk to Westchester coach Damian Blair. That's all coming up on the Pennsylvania Army National Guard halftime report. Forty-seven point three. They added eight tenths of a second, I believe. If I did my math correctly. Shot clock once again is at 30. Game clock 47.3. Long pass. Norfleet. That's gonna oh. be uh, that's gonna be a flagrant one, I believe. Uh, they might it's gotta discuss be. this. It's gotta be. That's not smart by, by Trump. Damian Blair, oh almost came off his crutches. It's got to be. Yeah, it's intentional. It, it, it's, it's yeah, Damian it. Blair's not happy, but that, that's just not smart. Westchester has not played smart today. No. They have not. They have made a lot of very questionable decisions, but, and that was one of them. And that was Trumpy's second personal foul. I mean, that was a tough one. The, the, the one where Avery Brown threw off the, um, the screener, that was just not good. Like you said, several bad decisions. And this is going to result also in possession of the ball. So two points are scored and possession is retained by the visiting Crimson Hawks. He's going to get a foul off the ball now, I believe. Wow. Something happened. Matt Wisely did something. And now he has two. So Westchester, the foul trouble is now piling up. Brown, Trumpy, Wisely, and Wilson all with two, and Tyrell Long with three. I didn't see what happened there with uh, Wisely. There was some rough play down on the close side to us. Mike Jalauso in. His first time in the game, I yeah, believe. Yeah, his first time into the game for Matt Wisely. So Damian Blair going small here. Very small, smallest man on both teams, five foot nine. And Jamal Slater, by the way, also checking into the game for the first time. So IUP gets uh, three points out of that possession, more or less. It's a back to a 12 point lead. Westchester headed down to nine. Let's see what they can do on this possession. We've got about a 14 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Jackson, corner three, got it. Great Big shot. shot from Malik Jackson. Jackson. Shot clock is unplugged. He was as deep in the corner as you can get and he put it in very nicely. Under 10. Good crossover by Lombardi. Pulls up for the J and he hit it. 
Let's see if Westchester can get something off. Three, two, Penical from half it. court. Ooh. Oh. And that is how the first half will end. It could have been worse considering how well IUP played and how poorly Westchester played, but it is still within striking distance for the Golden Rams down 11 at the half. We're gonna take a timeout. When we return, we'll have the Pennsylvania Army National Guard halftime report. You're watching PSAC men's basketball semifinal action here on SFBN presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Crimson Hawks of Indiana University of Pennsylvania, IUP, coming into this game at 21 and 7, 17 and 5, coached by Joe Lombardi in his 10th year. This is a game that was a semifinal, which will uh, give the winner the opportunity to play against the winner of the first game of that doubleheader played back in March of 2016, and that winner was Mercyhurst, a very tough squad from the northwest part of the state. Uh, star player, obviously, for the Crimson Hawks is Brandon Norfleet. 17 points in the first half, and he was very, very smooth and fluid, uh, leading the PSAC in scoring, and you can see why he is doing that. A very, very good player. You'll see more of him in the second half half of this game. Also coming off the bench for the Crimson Hawks is Dante Lombardi, son of the coach. Now when he first came into the game, I think uh, a lot of people and myself included thought, oh well, he's the son of the coach, he's a freshman, he'll get a few minutes and we won't see much from him. But no, he is a very tough player, hitting two threes and scoring t 10 points in that first half. A very strong presence. Dante Lombardi, six foot 180. And uh, on the Westchester side, on the Golden Rams side, three stars of the future, Matt Panikow, Jackson Highland, and Tyrell Long. All three of those guys in the next few years of their career, especially in their junior and senior seasons, were big, big integral parts of the Golden Rams, both offensively and defensively. We'll see how they do. Jackson Highland not scoring in the first half. A slow start for Matt Panikow, but you're going to hear a lot about him late in this game. And uh, you're seeing some uh, evidence of the ability of Tyrell Long to score. He does tend to get in foul trouble early in his career, and that does affect him in this game. Matt Wisely having a great start, and you'll hear a lot about him as this game progresses. Uh, poor shooting percentage for the Golden Rams in the first half, 38%. Uh, from the field, 21% from the arc, and 62% from the line, whereas Indiana University of Pennsylvania, IUP, banged it out at 63% from the field, 50% from the arc, and 69% from the line. These are the reasons that they are winning this game and giving uh, Westchester a very hard time by switching defenses and confusing the Golden Rams. 1-3-1, uh, one, one, a man and a matchup, all employed early by Coach Lombardi against the Golden Rams, and that has caused some problems. We'll see if Westchester can catch up in this second half. And stick around, folks, because this is an ending you will not see too often, a tremendous, tremendous ending to this game. See you after the end of this game. Uh, I'm going to give you the scoring from the first half. IUP. Glover with seven, Tanner with seven, Northfleet with a big 17, Ubede, Daddy Ubede with two, Lombardi with 10, and chipping in Kobo Diaz with seven. And for Westchester, Malik Jackson with seven, Brown with six, Matt Penical also with six, Jay Trumpy, I'm sorry, Josh Trumpy with three, Matt Wisely with seven, Mike Wilson with a deuce, Long had five, and Thomas White, White coming off the bench also with five for a total of 39. 50 to 39 is the halftime score. 63% field goal shooting for visiting IUP. Crimson Hawks, an incredible shooting performance. 50% from the three point line and 69% from the free throw line, whereas Westchester, the home team, only 38% from the field, 21.4 from the three-point line, and 62.5 from the free throw line. Once again, an 11-point lead, and as bad as home team Westchester has 
played, Ari, they were only down 11 points going into the locker room. Yeah, we talked about that uh, before we went to uh, to the break, that IUP played, except for the, the turnovers that IUP had, they had a nearly flawless first half. And Westchester just did not play well. I mean, I... I am surprised. I was looking. Me, you and I, Jack, have were looking at the stats and yeah. saying, "How is Westchester only exactly. down 11 in this game?" I mean, they've had they, the offensive rebounds have been there. That's the thing that they've had. So uh, that really has helped Westchester. And uh, it is you know, puzzling. It, it is. I mean, you, sometimes you look at a box score and you can figure out, "Oh, okay, I see what's going on." But but the box score doesn't tell everything. No, it doesn't. As we know. Uh, and, and so they are in this game. They're only down 11. Look, I mean, look at the first game here. They were down to s down six. I'm talking about Mercyhurst, down six to Shippensburg at halftime, and, and they won by, I forget the exact score, 10 or 12 or something like that. We're going to step so. away real quick, and when we return here on the Pennsylvania Army National Guard Halftime Report, the third member of our broadcast team, Frankie Stokes, will be live with Westchester head coach Damian Blair to get his thoughts on the first half. We'll be back. You're watching the Sports Fan Base Network presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Welcome back as Westchester returns to the floor. Head coach Damian Blair is now down with our own Frankie Stokes down on the far baseline. And, and we'll see what Coach Blair has to say about what happened in that first half. Frankie, what do you have for us? Point percentage right now. What are you going to do to try to slow it down? Well, when team, when really good teams are shooting at a high percentage, it's tough to slow them down. But what we need to do is we need to do little things to put ourselves in a better position to win. We're not shooting fouls well. If we shoot three or four, make three or four more fouls, it's a closer game. But we need to make um, better decisions on offense. On the defensive end, we got to tighten up and make those shots more difficult so that we can decrease that percentage. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Frankie. And, uh, you know, you know, he said you have to make some foul shots, which, yeah. of course, that's that's big. They only shot 63% in the first half uh, from the free throw line. But, uh, you know, you have to make, make IUP oh. work a little bit. I think that was one thing that I heard Coach Blair say as well. Yeah, I mean, he was saying that, uh, I mean, that when you let a good shooting team shoot at a very high percentage, you're not going to have a successful first half. I'm sure he was a little rougher in his language to his own team in the, in the uh, locker room in regard to um, what they were doing wrong. But um, yeah, he's not happy. That's not a happy coach right there. Down 11 at halftime, 50 to 39. Yeah, Westchester warming up right now. And uh, you know, they could use uh, to, some warm-ups to knock down some shots, especially a guy like Malik Jackson, who's two of nine from the floor. Uh, Avery Brown struggled as well. Two for six, yeah. And we're gonna step away real quick. That'll wrap up the Pennsylvania Army National Guard halftime report. And when we return, we'll have second half action for you between IUP and Westchester. Alongside Jack Cap, I'm Ari Bluestein. Thank you for joining us here on SFPN presented by Payroll Service Solutions as Westchester trailing IUP 50 to 39 as we get set for the second half. And obviously, you know, Westchester, they've been nationally ranked a number of times this yeah. year. You would think they have a good shot to get to the NCAA tournament, but the only way to definitely be in the NCAA tournament is to get the automatic bid in the PSAC. They have to win this game clearly. Mm. Well, IUP Starts right up. not letting up there with the bucket by Daddy Ubede. Easy bucket for IUP to start half number two. Avery Brown with a step back three off the mark. And now we're going to foul, have a yeah. foul underneath. That's as, a great uh, call. Tevin Hanner is guilty of shielding off Matt Wisely. Matt Wisely was trying to get to the ball. And he was definitely fouled Foul trying to get to that ball. Excellent look by the official. Penical lost it all the way out to Wisely. Second foul, by the way, on Glover. That was charged to Glover, not to Hanner. I apologize. Wisely over to Jackson. Launches a three from the corner. Mm. Rebound tipped out. And ends up in the arms of Norfleet. 
don't think the official took his eyes off that shooter and he shouldn't have. Norfleet around a screen, long two. Mm. Mm. Oh, he almost got the bounce in there. You bet it with the rebound and the putback and he was fouled by Trumpy. You're right, Norfleet's shot almost went in. Going to the line will be Daddy Ubede. Got the roll on the first. Ubede second on the team with 12.1 points per game, also averaging 4.3 rebounds. Pretty good free throw shooter too at 72%, and he makes two for two right there. Yeah. Four straight to start. The second half for IUP obviously doesn't bode well for WCU. Big high release by Daddy Ubede on that foul shot. He, he lands both of them. Malik Jackson back to Wisely. Thought about a three. Now Penical. Wisely's going to take it from the corner. He nails and it. Wisely hits his second Wisely. three of the game. Matt Wisely only with four threes coming into the game on the whole year. In the entire season, he's got two today. Well, he's a senior. He said, oh, you know what, I have to step it up here today. Spain trying to answer, and he does. And this IUP team is shooting above 50% from beyond the arc. This is an amazing performance so far by IUP. Jackson with the drive, bodies fly, no call. On the run, Spain again. This time it's off the mark, Wisely with the rebound, and then he was fouled by Tevin Hanner. Not a smart Fouls foul. Fouls on number 10, Tevin Hanner. That is his second. His second, team second. That's a killer after Wisely hits the three, then Spain with the quick answer. Kobo Diaz back in for Tevin Hanner. Again, just like what Mercyhurst did in the first game, Westchester just has to chip away. But they can't chip away if they keep giving up all these good shots by IUP. But credit the Crimson Hawks, they are just shooting at a very high percentage right now. And as you mentioned, Matt Wisely does not want this to be his last game as a senior here. Avery Brown no steps foul. in, wild shot, no foul, and rebound by IUP. Again, the shot selection just not very good for Westchester. There was some heavy contact. I thought there was going to be something close. Diaz outside for Glover. Missed it. Offensive rebound, Spain. Missed the jumper. Penical up the floor. Leaves it for Brown, who's going to launch it again, way off the mark. Jackson somehow gets the floorboard, and they get Ubede on the little bump. He didn't like the call. But that's number three on Daddy Ubede. And I believe Brown's hand was hit on his three-pointer and there was no call again. Second time where there was no call on the three-point shooter where I thought there should have been. Thomas White and Mike Wilson back in for Westchester. Trumpy and Brown out. CJ Rudisil running back under the floor and returning for IUP. Wisely, the drive. Dishes to Get White, strip from behind, and we're going to have a foul on Glover. Yep. That's going to be his third, team's fourth. Thomas White was in trouble there. He would have been called for traveling had that foul not been called. Penicale lobs it out for Wisely. He's going to launch the deep two. Mm. Doesn't get the bounce. So close. Norfleet stops, does not pop. Wisely picks up the floorboard. Penical, who's been fairly quiet offensively today. He does have six, but he's only attempted two shots. Wilson for three. Short. That looked on target, too. Tough Just angle. Just a little for short. Wilson. Bounce Very pass from Norfleet. Diaz had it knocked away, though. That was a great pass by Norfleet, but an even better defensive play by Penical. Wilson outside the Pentacle, drives the baseline, the floater got it. There you go, I just said it. Yep. He's gotta take more shots, Jack Cap. And you know how I feel about Pentacle. I just always hope he's more part of the offense as far as himself shooting. IUP up 13, they led by 11 at the break. 
Rudisil to Norfleet, 10 to shoot. High ball screen, Almost Norfleet. Passes it right to Penical, turnover Crimson Hawks. Take it, man. Penical goes it. in, what a move by the freshman at Penical. And Westchester back to within 11. I think a few years from now, he's gonna be a very high scoring point guard. I think he's gonna have to take more shots today. That's what I just said. He's got yep, 10 stolen. points Look now. at this. Nearly stolen. Oh, oh. Diaz, the drive, the kick out. 10 to shoot. Glover wants a high ball screen. He's gonna take a deep three off the mark. Wisely with a strong rebound and a good box out. Rebound number 12 as Wisely has a double-double already. Down low, Thomas White. He's gonna work against Rudisil. Turn around. Off the glass and good. And Westchester cuts it to single digits. Nice little run for the Westchester Golden Rams. And a big strong move from big man Thomas White. Timeout. Six in a row for Westchester, prompts a timeout by head coach Joe Lombardi. It becomes a full timeout, but we're gonna keep it right here. And while we are hoping for a Westchester comeback in this game, the women's squad for Westchester fell to IUP earlier today out in Cal PA. And uh, you see the score right there, it was 77 to 64. And you know, it's unfortunate uh, for yeah. the women's Golden Rams. Brittany Szynski had a great game, but and just she fell short. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they I mean, struggled a little bit. Benavy struggled. Dallas Ely struggled a little bit in that game as well. Uh, and now they're eliminated from you know, the PSAC tournament. They've got a chance to get an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. That would be nice. Uh, they were nationally ranked, or I believe at least regionally ranked at one point. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping that both of these Westchester squads can get into the NCAA tournament. And obviously, the Golden Rams, the men's Golden Rams, they've got 14 minutes and 54 seconds to come back and win this game. Right now, they've got some momentum, and we'll see if they can keep it up. They're you know, West Chester, run. You know yeah. Westchester all year, I feel like they've been a very good second-half team. They have, and, they've, they've, and just the game we did the other day against East Stroudsburg, they came back to get into this game from a big deficit. So they can always pull that off. I feel bad for the ladies. They had a great season. We broadcast a lot of their games. And it could continue in the NCAAs. It could continue. They possibly. Were, they were a great team, a great women's team. We're going to lose a bunch of seniors this year, am I right? Yeah, I would hope that they can get another shot. Because yeah. it, it, would, it, would, it would be tough to go out on that note. But and, uh, um, yeah. we're hoping that maybe the men can get a little revenge here on the Crimson Hawks. IUP basketball out of the timeout. 15 to shoot. Norfleet's in the post working against Wilson. Wilson is all over him. Now Norfleet across the lane, bounce pass. Rudisil, good pump fake, can't get it to go. The tip in by Diaz is no good, but we're gonna get a foul on Matt Wisely, and that's going to send Kobo Diaz to the line for two, and for Wisely, that is his third. That was very good defense by Mike Wilson there on Norfleet. So we have another timeout on the floor. We are going to step away for a moment as you got a good look at Joe Lombardi, the IUP head coach, and the Crimson Hawks will have a couple of free throws when we return as Westchester trails by nine here in this PSAC men's basketball semifinal contest. Alongside Jack Cap, I'm Ari Bluestein, 14-29 remaining here in this PSAC semifinal, and the winner of this game will take on the Mercyhurst Lakers who had a comeback of their own against the Shippensburg Raiders. So I'm hoping that the Westchester Golden Rams can do something similar and play Mercyhurst tomorrow for the PSAC Championship. Mercyhurst looked really strong in the second half, shooting 70% from the three-point area. Kobo Diaz, who has been to the line quite a few times tonight, makes the first free throw. Tyrell Long in, wisely out. Long comes into the game with three personal fouls, but he did have an impact in the limited time that he did play in the first half as Diaz makes the second. Diaz a very good free throw shooter. A very good free throw yep. shooter for a big man. He's six of eight tonight. Six of eight. Back to an 11 point spread. That's what it was at the half. Tyrell Long to Jackson. Goes in, splits the D outside the Long. He's gonna launch it, top of the key, got it. Tyrell Long 
It looks like he might be the guy you have to find on the outside. That's a second three. Eight point game, Tyrell Long with a line drive of a shot, nails it. Eight point lead for IUP, the answer, no good for Glover. Rebound tipped out, Norfleet comes up with it. Yeah. Norfleet trying to back down Wilson. It's a good battle. Mm. It's gonna be a hold on Wilson. That's gonna be number three on Wilson. That's a tough one because Wilson's been playing very strong defense against a fantastic Wilson. offensive player in well, Norfleet. Yeah, Norfleet at 6'5", Wilson at 6'2". And while Wilson weighs more than Norfleet, still Norfleet has the advantage, the height advantage. Wilson's a tough kid from the north part of Philadelphia. He comes out of the game with his third foul, though. Yeah, Trumpy in, Brown in. Also Lombardi back in the game across the lane. Can't get it to go. Tyrell Long with a good rebound. Lombardi definitely not shy offensively. Oh, oh. Penical tried to force that to Tyrell Long. And oh. luckily Penical got it back. Almost went backcourt. Penical pulls up. Can't get the roll. And a foul on. That's a very surprising call. Tyrell Long, that's his fourth. Very, very surprising that call was made. Foul number 14, Tyrell Long, his fourth, team's fourth. And Tyrell Long for now is going to stay in the game. And that's a shame because Tyrell Long seems to have found his touch today. He's three of three from the floor, two of two from beyond the arc. Norfleet for three, no good. And Diaz with the rebound, and I'll tell you what, with Wisely out of the game, Westchester is struggling on the glass. Trumpy call for the foul. He's going to come out, I would think. Well, Long is out Long with his fourth. Out. They Trumpy just picked up his fourth. They got to get Trumpy out of there. And Thomas White comes back in. And for IUP, 22, Rudisil. Rudisil CJ back Rudisil in the back in, yep. It's an eight point game, so it's still close, obviously. But right now, Westchester, they have a lot of issues. Not only foul trouble, but they've got to try and stop IUP. Glover misses the three, Diaz with the follow and one. And nobody is boxing out Kobo Diaz right now. Diaz with a strong rebound. He has been the heart of this IUP team in the second half, no question about that. Real name Jacobo or Jacobo Diaz. Jacobo, I guess, would be pronounced. Kobo completes the old fashioned three point play. Mm. And right. it's back to an 11 point lead, and wisely checks back in. And I think you have to because oh, yeah. you know, nobody's able to get rebounds right now for Westchester other than Matt Wisely. Matt Wisely with 10 points, three personal fouls. 12 rebounds. You gotta roll the dice and put wisely in. Oh, yeah. I, I, I like the I like the move. I don't, yeah, Meanwhile, I don't Malik Jackson has the basketball is two for eleven mm. from the floor. Avery Brown wants Lombardi one on one. Crossover the drive and he drew the contact. And Avery Brown will go to the line for two. We're gonna be shooting a lot of free throws here in the second half. As we're already up to 16 fouls for Westchester and five for IUP. Avery Brown at the line, senior out of Lenape High School, New Jersey. He misses the first. He'll get another opportunity. Ten point spread. IUP with the lead in the ball. They have led pretty much throughout this game. Westchester had a couple early leads. There were a couple lead changes early on, actually five to be exact. But it hasn't been tied since it was 9-9. Norfleet. Outside, now Lombardi gets wisely to fly by, missed it, Thomas White with a rebound. 
Good securing of the rebound by Thomas White there. There's a big possession right here, could use a bucket. Wisely to Jackson. Around a screen, goes in, the floater, got it to go. Malik Jackson. And that's what Malik Jackson has to do if he wants to get it going. You know, he can drive in, he can create some space with his length and quickness. And there's Jackson with a foul on Lombardi and he just got teed up. Every time Westchester tries to make a move, they do something, for lack of a better term that you can use on air, not smart. Not smart. And we're gonna take a timeout, and IUP might have four free throws here coming up. I believe you're correct. Well, they're gonna have a one and one, and they're gonna have the two tees and then a one and one. IUP up by eight on Westchester, still 11 and a half minutes remaining. We'll be back here on SFBN, presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Alongside Jack Cap, I'm Ari Bluestein. Thank you for joining SFPN, presented by Payroll Service Solutions for this PSAC men's basketball semifinal. And the winner of this game will take on the Mercyhurst Lakers tomorrow at three o'clock right here on the Sports Fan Base Network. So first we're gonna have the two technicals shot by Brandon Norfleet. And then we will have a one and one after Jackson also committed the personal foul. I believe that's how it works, yes. correct? The technicals are shot as, as a point of interruption. And then the one-on-one -on -one would be shot after that. So they should bring the rebounders back into the lane right. for the one-on-one. -on -one. So one of, one of two there for Norfleet. And now Lombardi will step to the line for the one-on-one. -on -one. That's the opposite of the way it's done in high school. First free throw is good for Lombardi. Second one is good. So a three point play essentially there for the Crimson Hawks and they take the lead back up to 11. Penacown very nearly turns Almost. it over. Now Brown lost it, and they're gonna get a reach in foul. And Lombardi. On Lombardi, Gotta and be. that's just the sixth team foul. So the next foul will result in a one and one for Westchester. Fouls on Lombardi, his third team, six. Penacal into White, around a double team. Mm. Oh. oh man, that would have been great if he could put that one home, but he'll go to the line. For two. Nice move by Thomas White. He's down on the ground, but I think he's all right. He's still down. He doesn't seem to be anxious to get in up. Pain. Not anxious to get up now. Oh, up. it looks like he rolled his ankle. Maybe. I, th I thought maybe he hit his knee on the ground. I don't know. He seems to want to shoot the foul shots. Oh, I guess he does. Hmm. Well, Thomas White of the line, he was one of two earlier today. Again, only a 49% free throw shooter. Missed the first. Daddy Ubede back in for Rudisil for the Crimson Hawks. Missed both. Westchester now under 60% from the free throw line as well. Ubede in the post to kick out Lombardi. Drives the baseline, reverse blocked by Thomas White. Lombardi very, very anxious to put those shots up. Sometimes he, he, he takes a nice shot, sometimes he, he, he forces stuff. 16 to shoot for the Crimson Hawks. Brandon Spain, who's had a nice game today. Six to shoot, Norfleet to Spain, drives the baseline, the running, floating shot, no good. Almost went down and Avery Brown gets the rebound. Now here's another opportunity for Westchester to cut into this lead. Penacal behind the back, tried to get it to Wisely cutting through the lane, it was deflected out 
and will stay with the Golden Rams. Pinnacal with an assortment of moves and footwork, trying to get an open look and then through a pass, bounced off IUP. Pinnacal will inbound, 20 to shoot for Westchester. Gets it to Wilson. Lombardi flies by. Wilson mm. can't get the three to go. Boy, he had, a, he had a, a, another second to get his feet in balance. balance. IUP with the ball up 11. Crimson Hawks led by 11 at the break. Norfleet the crossover. Pulls up for the long two. Hit it. Shoo. Too good. He North is Fleet. really good. He's got 20. 20 points for Norfleet. Just shy of his average. White in the post. Outside to Brown. In rhythm for three. Got the bounce. What a bounce. He'll call it a shooter's touch. Ooh. And a timeout immediately called by Damian Blair and Westchester. Cutting the IUP lead to 10 points here with just over 10 minutes to play. And now we'll tell you about the official sports drink of SFBN, Body Armor. Body Armor is an all natural super drink and is a healthier alternative to Gatorade or vitamin water. For more, with two and a half times more electrolytes than Gatorade and double the vitamins of vitamin water. For more information, go to www.drinkbodyarmor.com. You know what, I, I, just to follow up on it, I think we need to speak to people at Westchester here, they're selling Gatorade. <laughs> it's not a good thing. Yeah, I saw you were drinking water oh, oh, earlier. Oh, don't tell, don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> it was cold. <laughs> 10 point lead, 10 minutes to play. IUP basketball, Westchester setting up their full court press. Ends up being just actually a full court. They try a trap, but it ends up being a full court man, essentially. Norfleet. As a hold. Yeah, it's going to be a hold on Thomas White. Yeah, hold. On Daddy Ubede. Holding Big Daddy back. Fouls on Thomas White is first. Or as his friends nice. call him, Large Father. Daddy, <laughs> <laughs> Daddy to the line. One and one for Ubede, who's a very good free throw shooter for a big man. He was a big, strong guy. Oh, missed it though. You got him, you got him on that one. Because his release point is very, very high, although he is a good percentage shooter. And Penacal threw it away. Hmm. Only the second turnover for Penacal, but again, he hasn't really been himself with running no. the offense. Timeout. Timeout called by IUP. IUP takes a 30 second timeout. It'll be a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. And I want to remind you that on SFBN, uh, we will have these games on demand. And I believe the Mercyhurst Shippensburg game, it's not on demand yet, but it will be tomorrow. So you'll be able to watch the replay of both that game and this game that you're watching. Right now, just go to the same website, the Westchester portal that you're watching, and you can click on demand, and the replay should be up sometime tomorrow. There's the Westchester pep band. Probably the only students here today, Jack Cap. Mm -hmm. It's spring break here at Westchester. Yeah, how about that, yeah. I didn't realize it was spring break break until I got on campus today. When there were no cars here? I don't really pay attention to <laughs> the schedules of college students, but yeah, I'm sure they're happy about it. Well, hopefully we've got some spring breakers, Westchester students watching our broadcast here today, cheering on their Golden Rams. Lombardi. The pass. You bet I missed it. I, I think he was kind of in between whether he wanted to I, dunk or lay it up. I think he was shocked to get that pass. Thomas White in the post. Gonna work against you, Bede. Big man. Goes in, spin Shoot move. He got Off it. the glass and one. Beautiful move by Thomas White against Daddy Ubede. Very physical play and very strong move by big man Thomas White to bring the Golden Rams within eight. By the way, fourth foul on Daddy Ubede. And there he goes. So I the second he... leading scorer heading to the bench. He's out. He's on and the Thomas bench. And Thomas White back at the line. One of four from the line today. Mm. Doesn't mm. get the roll. Mm. Looks like it's going in every time he shoots it. <laughs> it does. It's just. 
Eight point advantage for IUP. This is about as close as Westchester Stolen. could get. Stolen by Brown. Penacal bounce pass to Jackson. Drives the baseline, high off the glass, no good. Rebound saved by Lombardi, got who's it. got it. Diaz has it, knocked out of bounds. It will go to IUP. Westchester didn't agree, but I believe it was last touched by the Golden Rams. I believe it was an accurate call. And for Westchester, that is one, IUP Wilson. ball, and Wilson back in for Jackson. Tevin Hanner back in for Rudisil. Here's Lombardi, high post, knocked away, ball on the floor, bodies on the floor, Wilson Great gets work. it to Brown. Up ahead, Penacal, let it go, now he saves it. To, to, oh. Another great save, a great save by Penacal. Uh, Westchester's just missing out terrible. on some opportunities here, and now what? Wilson takes it away. Who's this foul gonna be on? I can't see that being on Wilson. They call that on Westchester's Avery Brown. I, I didn't see it. Where was Avery Brown? I, di I didn't see that at all. And Damian Blair is hobbling around trying to complain. I really just have no comment I, I because do. I didn't really see exactly who got hit. But I didn't see, I didn't see Avery Brown commit a foul, but that's, it was so, such a frantic play. I know Mike Wilson was involved in the play. I didn't see, I didn't see Brown in there. Well, Wilson got hit, so you could have called a foul on that. That's what I thought and was going to happen. Avery Brown might have hit an IUP player, and that is what the official saw to make the call. I guess so. I, I just was watching Mike Wilson. Looked like he was hit hard. Tevin Hanner hits two of two as now IUP in the double bonus. Back to a double digit lead for the Crimson Hawks. And this lead has been floating right around 10 since late in the first half. Wisely faces up, goes in against Rudisil. Great move. Oh, oh man. couldn't get it to drop. Ooh. And you're right, that was a great move that by Matt Wisely. Was really Incredible. If that had landed, that would have been a play of the year, seriously. What well, would have been our play of the game? I don't even know how he got that off. Boy, Matt Wisely, he's, he's got some skills. Fourth foul on hmm. Rudisil. Fouls on Rudisil, it's fourth team. So ninth. Matt Wisely will go to the line. Wisely on the line. He'll have two. He's got a double-double, 10 points and 12 rebounds. He's knocked out a couple of threes today. Again, he only hit... Four three-pointers coming into today, and he has two today. Well, Matt Wisely has been a stalwart today. He has been very strong out of the great town of Emmaus, Pennsylvania, right near Allentown, PA. Two of two for Wisely. It's back to an eight-point spread. And again, like we mentioned, Jack Cap, this has really been kind of where we have been at. Yeah. Between 8 and 11, really, this whole half. Right around that barrier for WCU. Anthony Glover with it for the Crimson Hawks. Gets it over to Norfleet. Drives down the right side of the lane, off the glass. Can't get the roll. Jackson Highland, mm. who came back into the game a few minutes ago with a rebound. What a move by Norfleet. Penacal down the lane. Can't get it to go. Wisely rips the rebound away from Diaz. Now bodies on the floor, ball on the floor. Oh. Jump ball, possession arrow in favor of the Golden Rams. Yeah, but a quick jump ball. I thought Wisely had uh, secured possession there, sitting on his knees and was start going to start a dribble. And with that, we will take a timeout here with 7.44 to play. Westchester has struggled a lot of this game, but guess what? They're only down eight to the Crimson Hawks. We'll be back with more PSAC men's basketball action here on SFBN presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Alongside Jack Cap, I'm Ari Bluestein. 7.44 to play. Westchester has trailed pretty much throughout here, but they are in it with the basketball only down by eight. 
West Westchester will not go quietly into the night. That's for sure. Highland finds Penical, who was stripped. Got it He's back. Got it. He's got it. Oh. And he'll go to the line. Oh, I thought Penical had dropped it in there. Great hustle by everybody, both offensively and defensively. Second foul on Spain. Penical will shoot two. He's got the first. Penical with 11. And it's been a quiet 11. A quiet 11, but he's had a couple of big shots, though. I don't want to say anything here. Let's let him shoot his foul shot. <laughs> uh, got it. I was going to say, he hasn't missed a foul shot. <laughs> you were, <laughs> you were just, thinking it, so you <laughs> almost gave him I a I almost jinx. jinxed him with my thoughts. 69-63. It's a six-point lead for IUP, but I believe it's the closest Westchester has been since early on in the first half. I believe you are correct. A six-point lead. They have clawed back here. IUP has been very, very tough today. Norfleet. Oh, guy, man. Especially that guy Brandon right North there. Fleet. 22, basically spot on his average right now wow, for good. Brandon Norfleet. Such a good player. Wisely on the baseline working against Diaz. Got him up in the air. Now we've got the ball on the floor again. Lombardi comes up with it. And they're going to get a foul on Jackson Highland. Yeah, and I believe that is the right call. As, as Lombardi started his dribble, he was like kind of held by the on the ankles there. That's what it looked like. Mm. Fouls on Jackson Highland. His second second foul on Jackson Highland. And that's going to send Lombardi Lombardi's to the line for two. First one is good for Lombardi. Lombardi's had a lot of time in this game. In for Westchester, number three, Jackson, 24. 21 one. minutes off the bench for 21 Lombardi. 21 minutes coming off the bench. That is a lot of time, yeah. His father has confidence in him. And for good reason, Lombardi is strong. Great sports name, too, Lombardi. Four straight for IUP. They're back up double digits. Penical into Thomas White, who just checked back into the game. Got, got it, it to go, and the foul. It's going to be a foul on Hanner, his third. And they are utilizing Thomas White. He is really, really physical and taking a beating offensively. He'll go to the line. Now we just need the big man to make some free throws. He's 5 of 6 from the field and 1 of 5 from the free throw line. Oh, he missed that one. I think he tried to bank that one in. And that's going to stay here. Foul on IUP. That was not a pretty foul shot. His others look like they should have gone in. That one was not pretty. Well, he might have been trying to bank that one in. I think he's just very frustrated by his lack of ability at the free throw line. It just doesn't make sense. Norfleet with his Foul's third personal. So Avery Brown at the line for two. And as we mentioned that, Thomas Wade goes over and has a nice conversation with Hey, Coach Damian Blair, and I'm sure it had something to do with don't get frustrated on the free throw line. Just use your, your motion properly. Good. Two for two for Brown. 73-66, seven, rather six, six point game, 67, yeah. yes. Yeah. Could use a stop right here, this would be pretty big. Still a lot of time left in this game. There, this there is. Has been a very long second half. Lombardi to Diaz. Pump fake. And there's a steal. A race for it. Jackson comes up with it. Lays wow. it up and in. What an effort by Malik Jackson. Wow. He knocked it wow. away. Beat Lombardi to the ball. Lomb yeah, you're going to see Damian Blair. We just got a quick glimpse of it. He was on the floor. On that's the gonna be floor. A, that's going to be our stall agency play of the game. We'll tell you about that in a moment as Diaz for three. Oh, oh no. Three Big shot from the freshman Diaz. from Spain. And it's back to a seven-point lead. Jackson trying to answer. No good. Norfleet with the rebound and was able to mm. hold his pivot foot without his uh, teammate knocking him over. 
That last play by Jackson, our stall agency play of the game, Stall Bonds and Insurance, specializes in the construction business industry for all your bonding and construction insurance needs. Please go to their website, www.stollagency.com. Norfleet, what a fake. Traveling. Travel is the call. Accurately called. I thought you were going to give the play of the game to Damian Blair for getting down on the ground with that torn Achilles. Boy, was he into the game, Coach Blair. That was something to watch. There. Oh, it's PSAC men's basketball oh, semifinal. How can you not great. be? Into the game? That was great to watch, yeah. Westchester with the ball down seven. They oh. have drawn to within four here in the half. Wilson for three. Boom. Yes! Back to a four point game. What a shot by Wilson, and he has that in his arsenal. No question about it. Crowd making a little more noise. Big high screen there. Norfleet over White, no good. Fight for the rebound. Who's going to come up with it? That's going to oh, be a foul Mike on Wilson. Wilson is going to be beside himself on that. Mm. That Ooh. is number four. Ooh. Teammates are holding him back there. So Wilson with four, Trumpy and Tyrell Long also with four. For and IUP, Ubede and Rudisil are on the bench with four. A lot and of quite players. a few with three as well. A lot of players in foul situations here. That well, are if you not take a look good. at the foul totals, Combined 47 fouls, and there's still five minutes to play. That's a lot of fouls. Free throw is off the mark for Tevin Hanner. Thomas White coming 14, out. Tyrell, Tyrell Long coming in. Long coming back in with four personal fouls, but in limited time, he has been productive tonight. Nine minutes played and eight points scored for Tyrell Long. Five point game. You mentioned 47 fouls called in this game and there were several that should have been called. This has been a foul prone affair. Penicau to Wilson. He's gonna launch it. No good. Rebound wisely. Oh, and he had it stripped by Lombardi, but he stepped out of bounds. Great play by Lombardi. Yeah, wisely kind of made the unwise decision yeah. to put the ball down at the guard level. I agree. I think Wisely should have just touched it right back up as soon as he had the opportunity. He was all alone. He was all alone. And he usually would make that play, too. We've seen him many times make that play. Brandon Spain back in for uh, Anthony Glover. Blair is, Blair is leaving Mike Wilson in the game with four fouls. Well, Tyrell Long also in the game with four fouls. Yep. They're going to get what they can out of these guys. Well, there's under five minutes to play, potentially in your season. Yep. Wilson with a deep three. Get it. Oof. No good. Wisely fighting, and he was fouled. Oh, how Man, Matt is Wisely has been huge Jeez. tonight. He is so, 15 rebounds. 12 points, 15 rebounds. He's playing like a senior wow. who doesn't want his season to end. Great game, just great game by Matt Wisely, as always. He's got the first. I, I, I would pick him in a playground game, number one. He'd be my first choice. Or any team, for that matter. Great player, Matt Wisely. Got both. Three-point game, 428 remaining in the ball game. In regulation. regulation in you regulation, say. yep. That is correct. High post. Hanner. North Fleet. Off the glass. Oh got God. the bounce. Boy, I mean, we can't say enough about North Fleet. No, he is a heck of a player. He is really great. And we've Jackson said bumped and fouled, and he's going to go to the line. Fouls on number four, Lombardi. That is Lombardi's fourth. I mean, uh, a North Fleet just floats to the hoop and has so many different ways of scoring. He's at 24 points for this game, above his average. 
50%. Well, Malik, well, speaking of average, Malik Jackson right now below his average. Ouch. And that was his first time to the free throw line and he missed it. Unusual Brown, error, yep. Number one, Glover in for Westchester, number 11, Avery Brown. Malik Jackson will have another, he only has nine tonight. He averages almost 16 a game, a member of the all-rookie team and the all PSAC East team. IUP shooting 47% from the field for the game. Well, they were up to almost 70% yes, in the first half. Westchester at 39.3. Avery Brown poked it away. Ooh, it was, it was that back, it wasn't yeah. backcourt. No, yeah, it poked was. away by Brown. Says Diaz lost it, ball hey, on the floor. Travel. Still yeah, loose, right. Brown comes up with it. Up ahead to Panikow. Goes in against Northfleet, puts it up, got the bounce. Great take by Penical. it's a two point game. What a great move by Penical and able to avoid committing the charge at the same time. Agreed, that was what made it such a great move. Excellent move, great body control. Penical now with 14, tied for the team lead with Wisely. He's coming on strong. Northfleet, now picked up by Wisely, goes in. Puts it up, no good. Great D by Wisely. Northfleet one of the foul, but he wasn't gonna get it. Long goes in across the lane. No good. And that was one of the few bad decisions by Northfleet in this game, offensively that is. Not a quality shot. Under three to play. Glover and Jackson one on one, way away from the basket. And Jackson Tried to reach in and get the steal, and the official saying he was a little too frisky. Well, he and held that is his fourth. He held with his other hand. It's our final media timeout as IUP's lead has dwindled down to two. Can Westchester complete the comeback? Find out next on the Sports Fan Base Network presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Alongside Jack Cap, I'm Ari Bluestein. Thank you for joining us here on SFPN. What a game this has turned into. You know, you've had your moments when IUP was clicking on all cylinders. Yeah. Westchester has battled back. It hasn't been pretty, but they have battled back to within two. Definitely not a pretty game. I'm sure we're up to 50 fouls at this point, something like uh, that. We're uh, up to 51, to be 51 exact. 51 fouls. Wow. And again, there's been a bunch that could have been called. Glover oh. off to the left and a little short. On the first free throw, he will have another. Malik Jackson, Tyrell Long, both on the floor with four personals, by the way. Glover missed the second. He misses two. Oh, man, and Avery Brown has the rebound. And Unexpected. he races into the front court. Unexpected missing two there. Penical with it. To Wisely, swings it over to Long. To Brown, he's gonna launch it top of the key. Too strong. Not a bad shot though. Not bad, but Avery Brown is now one for eight from beyond the arc, so he has not had his shooting touch today. He had rhythm in that shot. I thought he was gonna nail it. Norfleet finally gets it. He was trying to get three. You gotta double this guy, I think. I don't know. Eight to shoot. High ball screen for three. Short. Floorboard picked up by Jackson. Here comes Westchester on the run. Jackson through the D, goes in, fouled hard, and he's going to go to the line. Fouls on Anthony Glover is fourth. Fourth foul on Glover. So Jackson will go back to the line. Finally got in double figures a moment ago with a free throw. Four he's got pl ten. Four players on IUP with four fouls. Same for Westchester. Yep. Eight players with four fouls. Jackson's got the first. On oh. IUP, Glover, Ubede, IUP, Lombardi, Rudiso with four fouls. Lombardi. Now they've also got three with three. Mm. Spain, Hanner, and Norfleet. Crazy. Three for Wisely and three for Avery Brown. Yeah, lots of fouls. Jackson ties this game at 79. Stunning development here at Westchester. The pep band making noise with the defense chance. Crimson Hawk basketball. 
Norfleet drives in, kicks it into the corner. It's a Lombardi contested three off the side of the backboard. Like we've said, Lombardi's shot selection, other than the first two shots he made, has not been very good. They have been questionable. If Westchester could score here, it would be their first lead since it was nine to seven. Penical to Wisely. Drives in, down the lane, high off the glass, missed it, too strong. And no weak side rebounding there. They needed somebody when he drove, they needed somebody on the other side. Well, there's really no big time rebounders in the game right now. Tyra Long is playing the power forward spot. But, but there wasn't a white shirt in sight there. You're right. A weak side. We're under a minute. Norfleet, down the lane, off the glass, he was fouled. He just has that ability to get near the basket and they just had no choice but the bump. That's number four on Avery Brown. Mm. You know what the crazy thing is? Mm. That is our uh, 53rd foul yes. and nobody has fouled out yet. Everybody's just like teetering on the edge of fouling out though. Five guys with four on Westchester, four guys with four on IUP. Norfleet at the line. Missed the first. Wow. IUP has not shot the free throws very well today. They're at 67%, but Westchester hasn't shot them well either. They're at 65%. Northfleet five for eight. He's got 24 points, eight rebounds. He's also got six turnovers. Overall, still a pretty nice game for uh, Northfleet, even with the turnovers. He's been impressive to say the least. He misses. Missed both. And wisely wow. with his 17th rebound. Timeout called. If you would have told me wow. that Brandon Norfleet would be on the line with a chance to give his team the lead, I, and he missed both, I would not have believed it. It is hard to believe that wow. he missed both there. Now, with 44.6 to play, the game tied at 79. Timeout by Damian Blair in Westchester. Where do you go here? Do you go to Jackson? Wow. Do you go wisely? Do you let Penical penetrate? Do you put Thomas White back in the game? What do you do here? I, I, I would love to see Penical penetrate and make a decision because he is a very smart player. And I'd love to see him go to wisely because wisely has been the man and we've been mentioning all game. Wisely does not want to end his career here by any stretch and he has produced today. Well, again, there's you know probably a good chance that Westchester has a shot to get an at-large berth in the NCAA, but you don't yeah. want to chance it. No, 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 absolutely not. And Matt, Matt Penical with the ball. Matt Wisely, top of the key. Thomas White is back in the game. Back to Penical, swings it to Jackson, drives the baseline, goes in, blocked! And the rebound picked out of the air by Spain. Shot clock is unplugged. Mm. And I think Coach Joe Lombardi might let this one play out. He's going to leave it in the hands of the PSAC's leading scorer, Brandon Norfleet. It's either going to be an IUP win or we're going to overtime, and that's the way Joe Lombardi wants it. Ten seconds now. Avery Brown on Norfleet. High ball screen. Norfleet. Step back three. Off the mark. Rebound Jackson, and we're going wow. to overtime here in Hollinger. What wow. Ending. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a timeout. We've got overtime playoff basketball. The best thing there is in March. We'll be back here on SFBN presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Alongside Jack Cap, I'm Ari Bluestein. We are going to overtime here at Hollinger Fieldhouse. And IUP is led by as many as I believe 14 or 16 points might be their largest lead I of this game. I believe it's right around there, yep. And Westchester wins the tip as we start the five minute overtime period. And IUP got the shot they wanted. Oh, and Westchester turns it over as Penacal's pass was too hot to handle for Thomas White. At the end of regulation, Northfleet was double teamed though. The timing on that double team was excellent by the defense of WCU. Lombardi to Norfleet, covered by Avery Brown. Diaz back to Norfleet, a good look from three, and he hits it, nothing but net. 
And that's something that IUP needed to jumpstart them and here in overtime. Virtually the same shot he had the, to end regulation. Yeah, except this time it was, was a not, cleaner look. Right, he wasn't double teamed. Yes. He was in rhythm. Avery Brown is trying to answer a short rebound by Brandon Spain. And so far, the two possessions here for Westchester in the overtime has not been good. No, and Spain. Turnover and a rush shot. Spain way up in the air for that rebound. Lombardi. Norfleet, another look from three. Oh, two wide open looks for Norfleet as IUP has opened wow. it up to a six point lead. And Norfleet suddenly at 30. Penical up and under, lost it. And this is going to be a jump on the go, possession arrows go, in guys. favor of IUP. Yep. What a struggle for the ball there. Oh, what a start for the Crimson Hawks here in overtime. Once again, 30 points for Northfleet. He has been spectacular. Well, after he missed those two free throws in regulation, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure that he felt bad. And he's making up for it and more yeah. right now. He could just as easily have 40 right now. Well, it goes without saying that Westchester needs a stop right now. Norfleet again. Passes it up. He's going to try it again. Oh, no. Oh, he almost got the bounce and wisely got the rebound. Penical. Awkward Matt shot, Penical but it worked. Great body control by Matt Penical. 18 rebound for Matt Wisely. Lombardi across the timeline. Indiana in no rush here. Norfleet. Nowhere to go, the kick out Diaz. Ooh, I thought he traveled, and now we have a loose ball underneath. Spain puts it up. Mm -hmm. Diaz, as the shot clock expires, no good. Bodies on the floor, ball on the floor, another jump ball. Wow. Jump ball goes to Westchester. Possession error in favor of Westchester. This is gritty, gritty, hustling basketball by both teams in this overtime. Even with the start that IUP had to overtime with the two threes by Norfleet. Westchester is in an okay position right now because they came up with two stops that they needed. Penical to Jackson. Had it poked away, got it back. Brown. Drives down the lane, foul. it's going to be a yep. blocking foul on Brandon Spain. That's going to be number four on Spain. Still nobody has fouled out a slew of players with four fouls, as we have mentioned. Avery Brown will go to the line for two. Mm. Missed the first. Both teams have certainly left a good amount of sh points at the line tonight. Both teams have missed 13 free throws. 11 players with four fouls. It's unreal. It's crazy. When you think about the amount of fouls, you would think somebody would have fouled out by now. They certainly have distributed them. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before in a game. Westchester trying to trap. Now here's Diaz. Norfleet around Wilson, goes down the lane. Off the glass, can't get the roll. Good straight up D by Wisely. Jackson kicks it in the corner. Tyrell along the pump fake to drive in. Up off the glass, got it to go. And it's a one point game. I thought he was going to get the foul there, too. Well, you know, he did a great job of shielding his body yes, he to at did. least get a good look at the bucket. And you're right, that was great defense by Wisely down the other end just prior to that. Also got his 19th rebound. And Lombardi calls a timeout for his father, Joe Lombardi. It'll be a 30 second timeout with a buck 34 remaining. What, what a roller coaster of a game this has been.
I mean, wow. you, you think about the, the different things that have happened in this game. You know, Norfleet starts off the overtime period with two threes, and you think, oh, my goodness, how is Westchester going to dig out of this one? And they did. And now yeah. it's a one-point game with a minute 34 left, and obviously head coach Joe Lombardi for IUP, he's going to draw up a play. I mean, is he going to get Norfleet involved? My guess he would. My guess is he would. You don't want to give up a three because then that makes it a two-possession game. Maybe they could do the same thing they did at end of regulation and get that double team on him at the right time, get him into a shot he's not comfortable with, which is not too much because he's comfortable with virtually every shot. Just to recap the scoring here real quick. Uh, by the way, we'll give you an update on the scoreboard. Uh, Cal PA defeats Shippensburg 78-62 over on the women's side. For the ladies. So it will be Cal versus IUP tomorrow at Cal for the championship. Of course, the winner of this game takes on Mercyhurst. Real mm. quick, the scoring. Norfleet with 30, Lombardi with 14, Diaz with 15, and Hanner with 10. That's who's in double figures for IUP. Right. For Westchester, 16 for Penical, 14 points and 19 rebounds for Wisely, 13 for Brown, 12 for Jackson, 11 for White, and 10 for Long. Those are all the players in double figures for wow. Westchester. Should we name all the guys who have four fouls? I don't think we have time. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know if they we foul out. We don't have time. I'll do it real quick here. Oh, Glover, no, Spain, Ubede, Lombardi, Rudisil for IUP. For Westchester, Jackson, Brown, Trumpy, Wilson, and Long. Wow. 11 players with four fouls. IUP has 15 seconds to shoot. Of course, they get it to their main man, Brandon Norfleet. Under 10 now to shoot. Norfleet around a couple of screens, pulls up for the two, no good. Rebound Mike Wilson, and he's fouled. What a rebound. You, you bet a, you bet a. And finally, we have somebody who has just fouled out. Go daddy, go back to the bench. Wow. He came off the bench, just came back in. Go back. 10 seconds later, he's out. What a rebound by Mike Wilson. Not a big man at 6'2", but a very tough kid from Martin Luther King High School in Philadelphia. That's going to put Mike Wilson at the line for two. Mike Wilson's a good free throw shooter. Coming into today, Wilson 78% from the free throw line, 42 for 54 to be exact. This will be his first trip to the line today. Got the roll. We're tied at 85. Six straight for Westchester after Norfleet drilled two threes to start this overtime period. And the Rams have the lead. 86-85. Wow. This game is a classic. First lead for Westchester since it was 9-7. And that was a long time ago. Yes, it was. Lombardi, crossover, behind the back, down the lane, stolen by Wisely. He's got it, gets it to Long. What a steal by Wisely on the dribble drive by Lombardi. A minute to play. And once again, Lombardi, not the wisest play. He is gritty, though. And a cow with 10 to shoot. Behind the back to Long. Almost stolen, but he goes in, puts it up, no good. Rebound by Spade. Up ahead to Lombardi. He's all alone. Jackson goes in, and it's a bucket for Lombardi. And IUP retakes the lead, 87-86. Game clock and shot clock, only a differential of a second plus. And Westchester calls a timeout. We're going to keep it right here. Whew. <laughs> oh my goodness. 1.9 differential between the clocks to be precise. Westchester had control of this game. Up by one with the basketball. Then Long misses the layup and Lombardi gets out ahead of the D and puts in the layup to give his team mm. the lead. Back and forth we go, 87-86, the visiting IUP Crimson Hawks from the western part of Pennsylvania. 
have the lead, but Westchester with the ball and more than enough time to get an opportunity. Now you're kind of in a position here, if you're Westchester, where you want to take a good shot, but you also don't want to leave a ton of time left for IUP, should you make a shot. That is correct. However, if something opens up, yes, take it. I think, you know, if you can use about 10 seconds here, that's ideal. And then if you miss it, you could foul, and it would still be a one possession game, even if IUP makes the two. A lot of scenarios, a lot, a lot of, of ideas. Yeah. The question for me right now is who do you go to? I think you have to try a dribble drive and then let Wisely try and get the offensive rebound. And you want to work your offense. You don't want to deliberately stall. No, no, no. You don't want to do that. No, you want to work the offense. They're, they're in a horizontal four straight across. They'll run their play from here. It'll be a side out for Wisely. The official saying Diaz has to give him some room. Wisely having trouble getting it in, gets it to Brown. Brown's oh, he was drive, and he was fouled by Lombardi. He was fouled twice. Oh, look at Damian Blair. Can we get a camera? There it is. We see, we see him on the He's top of hopping. his screen. He's hopping mad. There he is. And Lombardi, he has just fouled out of this game as well. And Damian Blair wants the multiple foul which has never been called in a basketball game, <laughs> to my knowledge. <laughs> it actually would be a technical, the second one. Right. Because of the dead ball contact. Right, but exactly. You're but not, there's not going to nah, be No, you can't call that. No, no unless there's an intent to injure or something like right. that. Right. No. no, it was it. Brown went in. Yeah. It's loud in here. You may not have heard the whistle. It was That's almost right. right after the whistle. Yeah, no, no, no. No. There was but no. that was a foul on Lombardi. Oh, yeah, definitely. And not a smart one at that. Second player to foul out for Crimson Hawks. Ubedi and Lombardi, both on the bench with five. And Glover checks back in. Great. At the line is Avery Brown for two. And a great effort all day by the coach's son. Yeah, Lombardi ends up finishing with 16 points and, and off the bench. Oh. Talk about holding your breath. Oh, wow. <laughs> Tied at 87. This one would give Westchester the lead. Got it. What a game. Shot clock mm. unplugged. He had trouble getting the ball in well, there. Well, Norfleet wasn't quite ready for that. Mm. And of course, it's got to be in the hands of Norfleet. Are they going to hold it? He might. Norfleet. All right, he's gonna make a move now. Picked Double. up by Tyrell Long. Double. Norfleet, crossover, step back, Jay. He got it with 5.2. Here comes Penical up the floor. He goes in behind the back, puts it up. It's he good, it. it's good, it's good in the buzzer. West Tester wins, West Tester wins. Matt Penical oh puts it in goodness. for the win. Are you kidding me? One of the greatest plays I've ever seen in college what basketball. What a game! What a finish! Oh my goodness! It's over, folks. Westchester wins this game. The final score, 90 to 89. Westchester with the win. Matt Penikow with a spectacular shot. I don't know how he did it. First off, what a shot by Norfleet. Oh my God. Fading away, he finishes with 32. I cannot talk enough about that kid. Norfleet is tremendous. He should keep his head high. But Matt Penical, the freshman from Abington, goes down the floor, behind the back, knowing exactly how much time was on the clock, and he put it up and in. A freshman. What Un a smart player. I mean, he's done it all year. He's Unreal. He's the best freshman point guard I think I've ever seen. One of the great endings in all of college basketball history happened in this game, and you just witnessed it, Matt Penical taking that ball down court in 5.1 seconds and putting that shot up. He beat the first defender. 
uh, very easily. He got to the second defender and sensed the man going after the ball. First defender tried to get back at him. He split them with a behind-the-back dribble with his offhand, by the way, his right hand, and put up that smooth and perfect little 10-footer, that floater, falling out of bounds, a, a great ending, to say the least. The dog pile was fun to watch, and the big smile on Penical's face, we'll never forget that, as guys who called the game and were able to witness that, along with everybody who watched our game and was in the stands for that day. A victory for the Golden Rams over the uh, visiting team from Indiana University of Pennsylvania, IUP Crimson Hawks, featuring the great Brandon Norfleet, who ended up playing pro basketball. He's in his fourth year over in Europe, doing very, very well. Averaged 20 points a game one season, and right now is averaging 15 points a game over in uh, Europe, in Denmark, playing for the Svenborg Rabbits. How about that? Uh, also, from Indiana University of Pennsylvania, Jacobo Diaz. Uh, Alejandro was his real last name. Diaz Alejandro, he's averaging 10 points a game over in his second year of pro basketball. Six foot seven, Jacobo Diaz Alejandro. Um, on the Golden Rams side, the only player in that game that ended up in pro basketball, Jackson Highland. In his first year in Great Britain, contributing nicely to the Plymouth Raiders. Uh, Jackson Highland had a just an awesome career, uh, getting better and better every year uh, playing for the Golden Rams. He did not score in this game. He was a raw freshman at this time. Of course, we discussed Matt Penical, and we want to mention Matt Wisely, who... Uh, ended up with a double-double and had uh, 15 points and 19 rebounds in that game. He was just everywhere. What a performance also by Damian Blair, the coach of the Golden Rams. You don't hear that too often, but the uh, uh, coach tore his Achilles tendon in practice, uh, had surgery, was in a cast on crutches and on a wheeler, put his knee on a wheeler and coached that game I'm sure he was in a lot of pain. We give him a lot of credit for that effort. Westchester got the opportunity to play against Mercyhurst in the final game for a chance to go to the NCAA Division II tournament with an automatic bid. They did not get that, unfortunately. But this game will always be remembered for what Matt Penical did at the end of that game. No one will ever forget that. Uh, just a very, very exciting ending and just a beautiful, beautifully timed shot by Penical. Ending this game with 32 points. Brandon Northfleet was the high scorer. Penical led the Golden Rams in scoring with 16. Avery Brown uh, was a big contributor with 15 points. And um, we mentioned Matt Wisely. Oh, he had 14, not 15. Uh, Thomas White was real strong down low and scored 11 points. Uh, great uh, effort from the big man, Thomas White. Uh, a, a awesome comeback, really, by the uh, Golden Rams. Uh, very, very difficult um, to come back in that game. They were facing uh, complex defenses and poor shooting in their first half. However, they did make that comeback, and we were glad to bring it to you. This will be the last SFBN Classic in 2020. During the pandemic, we were glad to bring you all these games, a lot of high school games, both football and basketball, and a few other sports in addition to those two. Uh, Ari Bluestone, our CEO, Josh Bellman, the director of production, and myself put this together, and we hope you enjoyed it. This is Jack Cap signing off for the last time and hoping that there'll be NCAA basketball in 2020-21. Talk to you soon. What an ending. And they will play the school anthem. Oh my goodness. This is great. Not great for IUP, but great for WCU. Well, well look, IUP, I mean, Brandon Norfleet and mm. IUP played a great game. Westchester grinded this one out. They grinded it out. 
and they're going to get to play for a PSAC championship. I mean, really, seriously, one of the great efforts I've ever seen in a college basketball game. Just, just fantastic. We're going to try and get Penical here. What can we say here? I would love to talk to Penical here. Look at here. the emotion there, Ari. Look at the emotion from these kids. Wait till that song is over. Uh, you talk about the last two games that they had to win here at home. Look at this. Look at this celebration. Oh, my goodness. How great is that? Somebody grab Matt Penical. Grab him. Get him, Frankie. She got him. <laughs> All right, yeah, we got him. <laughs> <laughs> Good work by Frankie Stokes. <laughs> Frankie Stokes has him. I got a foul on Frankie. She's usually not that aggressive. <laughs> that Penacal is going to be our Lloyd Sixness Sporting Goods player of the game. He's great. <laughs> All right, we're going to go down to Frankie to talk to Matt Penacal. Unbelievable. Westchester wins it by one. Frankie, talk to our player of the game. All right, Matt, just walk me. Winning buzzer beater uh, to send you into the PS PSAC championship. Tell me what it means to you. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable, like, just to do this for my teammates. Uh, I mean, just try to never give up. I, I was lucky to hit the shot. I mean, I'm, I can't be happier. As a freshman making it to I know, you know, just you and your senior teammates. I mean, I don't want to take it for granted, you know. It's, I know how hard it is to get here, all the work we put in, so I kind of just want to. I mean, it's not easy, but I want to try to just step back and take it all in. Okay, thank you, Matt. Matt Penacal <laughs> is our Lloyd Sixsmith Sporting Goods player of the game. Matt Lloyd Sixsmith Sporting Goods is the leading supplier of the Philadelphia Public League. Visit them today at 7554 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair for all of your sporting goods needs. I am spent from and, that finish. I mean, Matt Penacow was overcome with emotion, and so were we. Wow. Well, <laughs> we're going to be back here tomorrow afternoon for the PSAC Championship, and Westchester Whoa. is going to be in it against Mercyhurst. And I'll have to check, but I think both teams have not won PSAC titles before. I believe you're correct. I, I'm going to double check that, but it should be a fun game because we saw Mercyhurst. They were a great team. Mercyhurst is great. So, Woo! <laughs> We're still reeling from the ending of that game. I can't believe it. I, I really, I, 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 I guess he got the shot off with one tenth of a second, or at the buzzer. I don't know. It was, I couldn't, I couldn't look at both. It was amazing. Yeah, I'm looking at the Westchester banner. By the way, it says PSAC champions 1959. So 59. There you go. I was six. <laughs> it's been a long time. Oh. Well, thank you to our great crew here today. Brian Greer on camera. Frankie Stokes, our sideline reporter. She also manned the camera today. Crew chief and main cameraman, Marga Delicato. Director and engineer, Josh Bellman. For my partner, Jack Cab, I'm Ari Bluestein. We're going to be back here tomorrow wow. for the championship game. And I'm excited that it's going to be Westchester. Again, I can't say enough about IUP. They played a great game, especially in the first half. And Norfleet, he's a phenomenal player. He is a phenomenal player, to say the he least. He's a phenomenal player. And to overcome a guy that ended up with 32 points is just phenomenal. That's it from Hollinger today. Mm. We're going to be back at 3 p.m. tomorrow right here on the Westchester Portal powered by SFBN. Everyone enjoy the rest of your evening, and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this edition of SFBN Classics. We hope you enjoyed that game. Please like our Facebook page and also follow us on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube page. And for more information about us, go to www.thesfbn.com. I'm Ari Bluestein. Have a good night.